What's happening, people? Can something that doesn't have the capacity to think be considered intelligent? Could such an entity navigate its environment and find resources? The short answer is yes, but it's a forgivable mistake if you said no. Like many commonly known things, we often think we understand intelligence, but we really don't. Not deeply, maybe not at all in the end. Life itself may be intelligence. If the simplest form of life can do things beyond its neural capacity, it may mean that there's an intelligence beyond the nervous system. There may be intelligence or some type of awareness that's just had by being structured a specific way. Each of us that spent more than a second or two watching an ant colony or beehive work knows that simpler forms of life can accomplish things beyond their cognitive capacities in terms of information processing. Complex decision making too burdensome for a single member of a species can be done by the collective in a phenomenon called swarm intelligence. But what about life that possesses no brain and seemingly no awareness and intelligence? That's what researchers have been looking into for some years now using a eukaryotic organism called slime mode that exists most simply as a single celled amoeba. To experiment with it, they've essentially replicated the traveling salesman problem, a route optimization problem using a food source to see how well it optimizes a path with respect to scientifically optimized systems. What they found is that the slime mode is excellent, nearly as good as a human expert at finding the optimal path or minimal distance to various sources of food, even though it's just essentially a single cell that's able to expand itself. Masashi Aono from Kiyo University actually created a type of microchip powered by the slime mode to see if it could optimize in a more controlled environment. What he and his team found using light to limit the organism's movement was that the amoeba was able to handle increased variables much more efficiently than traditional computers. Where the computational challenge and efforts grow exponentially with variables added in a traditional computer, the slime mode is able to tackle the added load in a linear fashion. Understanding how the mode navigates its environment could help us understand intelligence and our own brains better. Knowing how things understand themselves and the world could lead to a revolution in computing, one where computers are based on neurons instead of logic gates. Powerful microcomputers modeled on the amoeba could power autonomous vehicles, portable devices, and so on. The applications for this low energy, high accuracy computation are truly staggering, but what's more interesting, what's more important here in my opinion, are the implications. As I mentioned earlier, it could mean that we have some intelligence beyond our nervous system, that our entire bodies and being are actually involved in our decision making, from our skin to our lungs, all gathering information and potentially processing it on some level to unburden an already taxed brain. I'm loosely calling this intelligence environmental intelligence because it appears that an organism and the way it's structured help it acquire information about its world somewhat passively. Almost as if the organism, being its simple self, just going about life, can't help but be educated about its circumstances and conditions due to a sensitive and symbiotic relationship with its environment. I don't know if this is ultimately true or scientifically provable if it is, but it's interesting to think about because it correlates to what many transcendentalists have been saying for thousands of years. The idea that we can be and are best informed beyond the intellect isn't something new. The Taoists and the Hindus have a similar opinion on this matter, as I see it. But what's new is the opportunity through slime mode, through this simple life form, to understand this rationally and objectively. I won't go too far into the subjective realm on this video because I think we want to be careful about making conjectures based on limited observations, but it's worthy of serious consideration. This is incredibly interesting and it holds a lot of potential for our future. A tiny cell could one day power our life or reveal a deeper truth about them. Maybe both. I hope you've enjoyed or appreciated this perspective and I hope it added at least one new degree of mental freedom for your existential bank. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below and I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Later.